And again, um, as I just mentioned, here we're going to use uh, we're going to use a, a more Coulomb model. So remember, this line indicates the more failure envelope, and that was determined by you know, we went to the lab and we tested rock at different confining pressures. We made all these circles, and then the line tangent to those circles we approximated as a straight line, and that's our more Coulomb uh, or our more failure model, right? And it has it's a two-parameter model that remember it has uh, basically a, a, a cohesion or a cohesive strength and an internal friction. The internal friction determines the the slope of this line, right? So we go to the lab, we do some tests, we define this more failure envelope, and then with that we can look at We can compute the actual stresses and plot them against our more failure line. And basically, any stress state that's over here is going to be beyond the strength of the rock and therefore cause the rock to fail. Okay? So if we plot that, if we plot where those stresses occur on our well bore, it can be indicated by this line. So anywhere inside this line, corresponds to a stress state, mainly hoop stresses, mainly hoop stresses, to a stress state that exceeds the more failure envelope and therefore will cause the well bore to be unstable, cause breakouts. Okay, so then what what's plotted actually here is that the if you remember from the more model, there's this parameter CO, so it's the value of that CO parameter uh, that is needed to have a stable well bore. So again, this figure is in color in the book. If you want to take a look, you'll be able to see. But basically, it just shows that, you know, in these areas where there's a high CO, then, you know, the, the rock needs to be stronger in that area to, to avoid having well bore instability. Yeah. Uh, how far, uh, can you determine how far the breakdown is of rock before the Yeah, well, I mean, these, these lines r really indicate it. Uh, yeah, so anywhere that you've exceeded the strength of the rock, if your failure model is good, right? Remember, they're just models, and they may not, they, they may not uh, represent the strength of the rock perfectly. But if the if the failure model is good, and and you know we can add sophistication to get better and better failure models, then we can determine, you know, exactly how deep into the rock it'll go. Of course, you also have to remember that once you have some breakout. Now your well bore is not a perfect circle anymore, right? So the curve solution is not exactly accurate anymore either. So these are just models that help us design you know, well boards. Ultimately, what we'll want to do is add some safety factor in there, right? If we could, we'll talk about how you, one way you can stabilize a well bore. But unfortunately, there's not a lot of room to add safety factor, right? So when I say safety factor, you know, it would be great if you could just avoid, uh, if through well bore stabilization, which is essentially going to be with mud weight, right? If you could just increase the mud weight as high as you want, and you know, to, to such that you're you're two times of away, you know, twice as far away from the failure envelope, right? That would be some safety factor, you know, where the maximal stress is is half, right, that would be a safety factor of two. The maximal stress is half the stress of the failure envelope. Unfortunately, we can't do that, and I'll talk about why. There's a, there's a small window, actually. 